the great physicist of the last century, uh, Richard Feynman, said, no one understands quantum mechanics the way we understand classical physics or macroscopic physics, the large scale physics. Why? Because its understanding forces us to accept some logical inconsistencies, such as a single indivisible object being here and there at the same time. Or moving to the left or right at the same time. Or spinning one way or the other at the same time. In fact, the simplest atom, hydrogen atom, which is made up of only one new, one tiny particle proton at the center and electron outside, just only one electron. In its lowest energy state, the electron is not only moving to the left and right at the same time, but it's moving in all directions, squeezing in and squeezing out at the same time. So what can we do? Well, I will be presenting some visual analogs to comfort our intellectual paralysis in understanding this weird behavior of the quantum. So what is classical and quantum physics? Physics is the foundation of all sciences, basic and applied, which includes engineering. And classical physics is the physics which deals with large scale objects, like what we see in our daily life. We can predict lunar uh, eclipse or very accurately, we can, you know, all, uh, and everything works at large scale using classical physics. However, when we go to small scales like atoms and molecules, the classical physics breaks down, it doesn't work. Quantum physics is the foundation of all physics. We can derive all the laws of classical physics from it, as well as we can understand the behavior of particles like electrons and photons or molecules and atoms. And not only that, we can understand behavior of even the entire universe. So then, if quantum mechanics, laws of quantum mechanics are the foundation of all the laws, including the laws of the macro physics, large scale physics, then how come the quantum laws appear to be inconsistent with our classical notions? So the problem is with the quantum mechanics, not that its predictions are not good. In fact, for 90 years, Whatever it has predicted has come out to be true, and it has been verified experimentally to accuracy of one in 10 to the power nine, one billion, or even better. And it perfectly works. We know the rules, how does it work? But the problem is, why does it work the way it does? That's what we don't get it, because it is uh, to us, which we are kind of a large scale object, these rules appear to be. Uh, uh, inconsistent logically. So uh, now, visual analogs, which I will be presenting, and uh, again, these are analogs. Actually, uh, analog is analog, not a real thing. They are good only up to a certain extent. Uh, but they are very helpful in learning something new in terms of what we already know. And Vision is our most powerful sense. In fact, eyes are the windows to our brain.
So let us look at this. White light go, going through a glass prism and comes out as in different colors. Now you know that when you are in, on an intersection on a highway, when the light is red, it cannot be green. And better not be green when it's red, okay? Uh, and when it's green, it cannot be red, or, you know, and similarly other colors. So these are mutually distinct attributes of light. But if you look on the left side, the mutually ex exclusive attributes, they kind of exist together in the wild light. So their superposition generates a still new state. And that's the fundamental principle of quantum mechanics. If a system can exist in, if an electron can spin this way, and it can spin this way, it can also spin this way and this way at the same time. We are forced to accept that kind of situation to understand the outcomes of the experimental results. So, here, it's a duck and rabbit. Some of you might be seeing it as a duck, others might be seeing you as a rabbit, and if you keep focus on that, sometimes it switches from rabbit to duck, but you don't see the rabbit and duck at the same time. Although in the picture, it is both at the same time. Now this is even more strange. This is a dynamical illusion. The lady is spinning, to some of you in the audience, it might be spinning this way, and to others, it might be spinning the other way at the same time. And if you keep focused on that, it will flip. Sometimes it will flip from one way to the other way. I analyzed all the frames and details, and I found out it is really doing this. So we say, seeing is believing. Is it? Look at that spiral pattern. It looks like a spiral. But if you remove the background, they are really concentric circles. If you don't believe, you can trace your finger. But we don't see the reality even after we know it. <laughs> so now, I will move on to the experiments in quantum mechanics or quantum physics. So here, uh, we have electron gun, which shoots electrons through that uh, double slit, two openings in that screen. And the yellow screen uh, has a detector. In fact, the yellow screen is full with detectors. Everywhere there's a detector. When upper slit is open, uh, what you find is the red pattern. When, only the, uh, when lower slit is open, you find the blue pattern which is just like what, if we fire bullets, it will generate very similar pattern. But when both slits are open, what you see is the pattern, rightmost pattern, which we call interference pattern. It's a wave-like pattern. That's what waves also do. If we shoot waves from the, shoot waves uh, through that two openings, the waves divide, they break down, and the two new waves starting out, they, when they arrive at the screen, they generate that uh, wave pattern. And we understand that classically. We really don't require for classical waves like water waves, sound waves, we don't require quantum mechanics. How we understand that? Because the waves are starting out here. Suppose if only, suppose only upper slit, upper slit was open, then the maximum intensity of the waves will be there in front of that slit. Only kind of one curve like this. Uh, but when both slits are open, what happens? 
that from the lower slit, there might be a trough arriving there at that point. And from the upper slit, there might be a crest arriving at the same point at the same time. And the trough and uh, uh, crest, they cancel out each other, giving you no uh, babe there at all. Uh, while at the other points here, there is a constructive interference, crest over crest or trough over trough, and you get uh, maximum disturbance there. Uh, similarly here, uh, the pattern here on the rightmost side appears like wave pattern. But it cannot be explained the way we explain the uh, other wave pattern for classical waves. Because the problem is that if the, the, the arrival of the electrons at the screen is detected as one piece, because we suppose that the electrons are like particles, and they are detected like particles. Whenever you detect an electron, it will be one piece as a whole. It's the most elementary particle. It cannot be divided into anything smaller. There's nothing. So it's detected as one piece on, a, uh, on the screen. And, uh, and so there you see actual experiment. In the first screen, you may not be able to see. I can see at least. But there are only seven, eight spots, bright spots. That's where the electron hit. And now I'm talking about one electron being sought at a time, one at a time. Of course, you shoot thousands and thousands of them, but one at a time. So the electron arrives randomly anywhere. You can't predict in advance where it's going to land. When we, however, when we shoot uh, thousands and thousands of electrons, here this is a pattern about uh, uh, 40,000 electrons. And here is the pattern about 160,000 electrons. And now you generate that wave pattern. So the electrons is a crazy object. It behaves. It is detected like one piece as a whole. It's not, it does not generate. Single electron hitting at one place does not generate a spread out, kind of smeared out pattern over the whole screen. It generates a particular spot. Uh, but uh, when you shoot thousands and thousands of them, they lie uh, on a pattern, which is a wave-like pattern uh, uh, there at the rightmost. So now, one more subtle thing about this is that if you put, if you put a, a translucent screen in front of that slit, so that screen tells you when a photon passes through it, it gives you a kind of flash. So you know now which way the electron is going, through the upper slit or through the lower slit. Then you don't get that pattern. You, what you get is the sum of these two patterns, which will be something like this, and not maxima minima. So, when you know that the electron is taking one path or the other, it's just behaving like a particle. But if you are not watching, then it behaves like waves. Uh, I will skip that, or maybe a little bit just. Uh, OK, here it's a photon. Uh, photon means light, a smallest packet of light, it's striking uh, a Trans, uh, transparent, semi-transparent piece of glass. We call it beam splitter. Is it reflected or transmitted or both? If we put a detector on the right, both, suppose we put two detectors, both on the left and the right. And if we are sending only one photon at a time, only one detector will click. Never click both together. That means the photon is taking one path or the other. But if we put the same device in an interference pattern uh, apparatus like this one, and if we put another beam splitter there, second beam splitter, what you find is that 
So if only, suppose, suppose initially the beam splitter is not there, the photon goes this way and comes here. If it goes this way, it comes here. But when the second beam splitter is there, all the photons end up here, nothing goes there. And that cannot be explained unless the photon goes through both the paths, every photon goes through both the paths at the same time. Because if we block one of the paths, suppose, suppose we block this path, then these photons will go 50% here, 50% there. But when both paths are open, all end up on the right detector, nothing goes to the uh, lower detector there. So, our mind is not really a good tool uh, to understand uh, this behavior because we have a lot, our brains have evolved to avoid these very kind of logical inconsistencies. And, and that's the reason we are unable uh, to understand the quantum reality. So, finally, some uh, view conclude, conclusion. The object does not necessarily pre-exist the observation, but can be created by it. Observations are projections of mutually exclusive aspects of the overall reality. And lastly, visual analogies help to internalize this crazy behavior at the quantum level.